Hey everybody, I'm Russell Lord, I'm the curator of photographs here at NOMA, and uh, today on Halloween, I'm delighted to introduce you to one wall of our current exhibition, Past, Present, and Future, which we have sort of unofficially titled the Spirits, Ghosts, and Murderers wall here in the exhibition. Uh, I want to just talk a little bit about each of the photographs on this wall, beginning with these two, which uh, make use of different optical properties of photography to kind of fool your eye that make them look somehow implausible. So the first one here is a picture by Clarence John Lachlan uh, called Suspension. And it's called Suspension because if you glance at it, it looks as if the picture is floating because all four of these columns don't touch the ground. They're actually in the process of being shored up. Uh, and you can see the structures that hold them up. But in keeping with our kind of theme here on Halloween, if you look very closely, you'll see that somebody was walking along the sidewalk and was moving too quickly to be captured precisely by the camera, so they appear as a kind of ghost-like figure as they walk in front of the, the building. Uh, moving on to the next picture by Richard Albertine, who's a photographer who taught at LSU for many years, we have this wonderful picture of another photographer, Minor White, who he went on a shooting trip with across the US, and in this picture, we see photography's strange way of flattening out space. Uh, it looks as if Maya White was standing on top of a rocky outcrop that juts out over the water, but in fact, this rock comes down to meet the water. So this strange optical effect looks as if it drops off the table here, and Minor White seems to be almost floating, suspended above the, the pool of water there, uh, when in fact he's actually standing on a rock that goes straight into the, into the river passing by. Uh, moving on to the murderer section, we actually happen to have uh, portraits of two of the most infamous assassins in American history. This is a 19th century tintype of John Wilkes Booth, who of course was uh, Lincoln's assassin um, in the 1860s. This is a really special object that has just come into the collection recently. Uh, tintypes are a process made in the 19th century that were produced directly in the camera. So the thing that we're looking at was actually inside a camera sometime in the 19th century, uh, and that means that it's one of a kind. Um, now having said that, you could actually make a tintype of another tintype to make a copy if you wanted to, and we know that in this case that's actually what happened. There are a few of these that exist, but it's still really special to have one of only a few of these um, in existence here at the museum. Uh, the next uh, picture is a, uh, a portrait of Lee Harvey Oswald uh, handing out hands-off Cuba flyers uh, here in New Orleans. This was uh, a scene that was captured actually when a, a local news cameraman just went down to sort of shoot some b-roll for somebody who was handing out leaflets, and it only became an incredibly important document months later when the assassination of John F. Kennedy took place, and the people at uh, the newsroom sort of went scrambling to see if this film still existed, and sure enough, they actually were able to rescue it from the bin on the last day before it was thrown into the trash, and made a still photograph from that moving picture frame, uh, and now have one of the last kind of remaining and known pictures of Lee Harvey Oswald, which here in the museum is next to a portrait of Marguerite Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald's mother. Uh, and this portrait is by Deanne Arbus, a very famous uh, photographer known for her work um, for magazines and as an art photographer, uh, and this picture was made uh, as a commission for Esquire magazine. Uh, perhaps the most appropriate pictures to talk about on Halloween are these pictures which uh, are purported to be of actual ghosts. Uh, these are from 1931. They belong to a category of photography that we call spirit photography, which is photographs that are believed to actually be of spirits. Uh, this is something that emerged Shortly after photography was initially introduced to the world um, in the 1830s, spirit photographs began as early as the, the 1840s. And it sort of comes out of this belief that photography, or this understanding really, that photography is capable of seeing things that we can't see with our own eyes. Uh, by the time these were made in 1931, for example, there were x-rays in existence, so we could see into our own bodies. And there were pictures that could stop the movement of a bullet mid-air, and you could capture a bullet or a drop of water sort of hitting the surface of another liquid. So if it can do those things, then is it such a leap that could also potentially record spirits or ghosts that we can't see with our own eyes? 
That was something that people believed uh, in the 1930s. And so here on the top, we have a picture of a seance. And you can see that presumably the photographer has caught the upside down portrait of a spirit um, that the members of the seance sitting around the table have conjured up, sort of floating in what they would call ectoplasm uh, there. Uh, that one, I think, for a lot of people seems a little silly, probably very likely faked. Uh, but this one, perhaps because it's more abstract, is often seen as a little bit more believable. Here we have nothing but a little pattern of light and some lines uh, in a picture. And this one's special because uh, this was made from a glass negative. And the story that's written on the back of this says that this glass negative was kept in a box that was light tight and it was put on the table during a seance and it was not exposed to light at all. And after the seance was conducted, they brought it back, they developed it, and there, even though it had never been exposed to light, the remnants of some amount of light were on the negative. So where did that light come from? Is it light that we can't see? Was it light from spirits? Uh, and perhaps the most fitting piece of this anecdote, uh, this was actually developed um, and the seance was conducted on October 31st of 1931, exactly 88 years ago today. So with that in mind, be on the lookout for spirits tonight, enjoy your Halloween, and come check out this exhibition at Normal.